It's a great delight to be here at the Maryland Science Center and to be with three Nobel Prize winners and the display of the future of the James Webb Telescope. Here in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, we display our Hall of Fame and why we're a Hall of Fame city. A few blocks away uh, on Saturday, I helped de dedicate a statue to Brooks Robinson, one of our beloved baseball players who went on to uh, win a set of awards and Hall of Fame, and we love him. When you go up there and you look at Brooks and Johnny Unitas and Cal Ripken, you see that great players can be great people. And when you come here and look at the James Webb Telescope and embrace the fact that it is here in Maryland, both at the Space Telescope Institute and Goddard, we have three Nobel Prize winners, the greatest telescope called the Hubble since Galileo invented the first one. And we know that great people and a great telescope produce great ideas. This is why I'm so proud to represent all of you. We are the Hall of Fame. We do win Nobel Prizes. We work every day now to even win the markets to talk about jobs in the future. And today is a day to really look at the future and know that the future is truly us, that the future is truly the United States of America. Jeff, I want to thank Northrop Grumman for what they're doing to build the Hubble Telescope, I mean, build the James Webb. We're counting on you because there is no repair kit in space. Um, and we have Barry Garver here, the Deputy Administrator of NASA, representing both NASA and representing the President of the United States. Laura, we welcome you. And of course, our wonderful Nobel Prize winners. I want to acknowledge Dr. Ricardo Giacconi, who is the founding father of the Space Telescope Institute in Baltimore. I met Dr. Giacconi when I was a brand new senator, and we were just getting the Space Telescope Institute underway. He showed me new ways of thinking about science and talked about this new dream that would come, which would be the Hubble Telescope. And Dr. Giacconi won the Nobel Prize in 2002. And then we have Dr. John Mather at Goddard, who won the Nobel Prize in 2006, and himself an astrophysicist right over there uh, at Goddard. And now our most recent winner, Dr. Adam Rees of the Space Telescope Institute. Doctor, we know that you have proven the existence of dark energy. We know dark energy is 73% of the universe, but we know you give 100% to science, and we really, I think we should give all three of our new dogs. Uh, and we couldn't have done a lot of work that we did unless we had very brave astronauts. There are those who often want to create the dichotomy between space science and human space flight. In our country, and the way we envision our mission, they go hand in hand. We need astronauts to explore, and astronauts to help us build the technology in space to help us explore further than they can go right now. And I want to acknowledge here, too, the new Deputy Director of the Space Telescope Institute, Dr. John Gronsfeld, who went and repaired the Hubble, not once, not twice, but three times. The Hubble and all of us love you, uh, Dr. Brunsfeld. <laughs> and we're here at the Maryland Science Center. If you look around the Inner Harbor, you will see, yes, we have great stadiums in which the great games of American sports are played, at Camden Yards and the Ravens at M&T Stadium. But over here is where the great game of life is played. It is in our National Aquarium, where we look and study and learn about a universe <clears throat> and our own big blue planet. And here at the Science Center, it's to educate the next generation. And that's what we're here today. Look out there at the model of the James Webb Telescope. <clears throat> well, it's four stories hard, tall, it's 80 feet wide, 
It took 12 people and two cranes to build it. And that's just the model. What we're really talking about is the telescope that's taking 1,200 men and women to build it. And when they build it, look what they will find. Look at the new ideas that's going to lead to the new technology in space. This permanent exhibit will speak for itself. Cool infrared science. Observing the universe a million miles above the Earth. Working on discovery. And the great thing about science is you never know what you're going to find, and sometimes you never even know what you're looking for. But when you find it, you know you got it. And then over here, we have the astronomy, the time machine, and so on. The James Webb Telescope will be larger, but it's not that the telescope will be bigger. It's that they will be able to do even bigger things than the Hubble. We will see 100 million times more than the Hubble could. That is stunning. It is truly stunning. Now, the Hubble's not, I mean, the James Webb Telescope has not been without issues. And we've been able to solve those issues. We've been able to work to get a new focus, um, fix the potholes and the speed bumps that have plagued us. We have a greater sense of frugality, and we've been able to reform the management system. We think we've got the web on, on track. Now, I've talked to my colleagues in the Senate, and I've talked to my colleagues in the House, and said we've got to support the next generation of astronomy. That if you love the Hubble, you're going to be crazy about the James Webb Telescope. And this is our moment. This is our time to study time. This is our place right here now to take us to the next place in science and astronomy. And for all, for any party that you're in, there continues to be the passion and the desire for there to be an exceptional America. And we're exceptional, exceptional not because we win races, but we're exceptional because we go where no other nation can go. So I was able to persuade my committee and the Senate to fund this, the James Webb Telescope. And I will tell you that next Tuesday, the Senate will pass the federal budget that will put in $500 million to put the James Webb Telescope into space, into the science books, into the history books, and secure America's place in astronomy for the next 50 years. Exceptional, uh, and we will do. We hope to have this on the president's desk to be signed into law by Thanksgiving. It will be a great day when the president does it, but it will be an even greater day when the James Webb Telescope goes into space. We're going to be counting on it to be provide scientific leadership that no other nation could do to continue to do technology development. Because people say, why should we be doing this? When we do the James Webb, already 10 new technologies have been developed. And also we want to say to our young people, study science, study technology, be able to go into these wonderful fields and be able to do this outstanding, outstanding work. And we believe that this is important. The other thing is, is that we often, we in Maryland, because we have our roots in a blue collar world, is that we don't realize the incredible amount of jobs that space provides. Between the Space Telescope Institute and Goddard Space Agency, and the private sector who works collaboratively with us, there's 10,000 jobs. 10,000 American jobs that will not leave the United States unless we let the opportunity to find research go overseas. 10,000 jobs. We often don't think, when we say, what state is the space state? We often think of Florida with Cape Canaveral, or we'll often think of Texas with its mission control. But really, when you think, what is the space state? It is the state of Maryland, with Goddard, with the Space Telescope Institute, with Wallops, and with the Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, 
We are the space state, and don't let Feinstein, Bill Nelson, or anybody else tell you any different. We are the space state. And so it's with great pride that I am here today. And the reason that I fight so hard is because I believe in our science, and I believe in the independence of science, unfettered, unfettered, that can go where no man or woman was ever going before. So I'm going to continue to fight for the financial resources and the management structures so that all these excellent people can get to do the great work that they do. And then in that way, we will take America far into the 21st century, and we're going to mark this time that it is our time to secure our place in astronomy. There are those who keep wringing their hands about China. We can't stop China. We can only stop ourselves. As far as I'm concerned, we're unstoppable. I'll do everything I can to make it happen and may the force be with us. Thank you.